So in my last video, I put in the description just in case you forgot who's in charge. Now, a lot of people with bloated or inflated egos might take that offensive because, you know, at the end of the day, the way it came out for me is basically I am you and you are me. You're in charge of how you perceive things and how you're managing things in your reality. Now, the same way I spoke about attracting money, okay? See, money I talked about comes from trees, okay? Now, money is a an idea of value, of abundance, based on the on the collective, putting the value on that dollar, okay? Comes from trees, been cut down, you know what I'm saying? It gets printed out. The consciousness of abundance comes from you, though, in order for you to attract that idea or that energy of abundance that we categorize here as abundance that makes you feel powerful. Because, you know, there's moments where when you got a load of wad of money in your pocket, I mean, you go outside, you, you your chest poke out, you know what I'm saying? You you start treating people, you know what I'm saying? You got a different sense of uh, empowerment to some extent. You, 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 you feel in charge when you got a little bit of money in your pocket. But when you don't have money in your pocket, the insecurities start coming out. You start to feel uh, worried about bills and stuff like that, right? And it's just all ideas, you know? Now, here's the thing. Money gets attracted to you based on your consciousness. So if you have an abundant consciousness, then money is attracted to you, but only based on the idea that everybody puts on it, right? So you, okay, and but money doesn't have a consciousness. You have the consciousness. So when people are unconscious, okay, and I say you're the money, you will be steered, okay, in the direction to be used like money. But you mean, you mean you, this is the thing you have to understand though. When you have money, money is a servant. You're the master, okay? That's why the consciousness has to get changed from working for money to attracting money. Instead, we look at it into... Because here's the thing, though. Everything starts from the metaphysical. You're nothing but an idea, okay? What is the idea that you have about yourself? If you're unconscious about what, who, and what you, and where you are, then you'll be steered the same way money gets steered to a person who's going to utilize that money, whether it's for bad or good, okay? Or use it to their advantage, to, to serve them. Now, this is the thing about this whole thing. When you become conscious of this, okay, what do you do? Do you make lifestyle changes? Do you make decisions now to put yourself in the driver's seat? Because a lot of the times, if you get steered into the direction of you being the money for other people, then you're nothing... But that, you hold a lot of value, but for somebody else's projects. That's why I said that at the end of the day, you sell your soul because then a soul is an individual spirit. But if you're not an individual spirit, then you're nothing more than the people who are managing this because they have you use your power against you to make you believe that the real value is on the dollar. You see, they had to, and it's not about them knowing how to manage money. I don't believe that that's all there is to it. The way I look at it is they printed this dollar. They created the dollar, okay, in the image of you. Just like computers were created in the image of man, man was created in the image of God, but they created a dollar to have you chase something the same way they chase you and rely on you, all right, for your energy. So you rely on money. Now, the way this goes is that you blindly consent to it. And that's how, that's why the money was originally printed, I believe, is to have you be just like them, the people in power that we gave our power to because we just forgot who we are. We got lost in the body. And I feel that it's, it's all based on desires, emotions, the belief and the scenario that was created to us of a false reality of us living a certain way, and this is what true abundance and riches really are. So you go chase that in order to say, this is how reality should be. So in other words, the people who do this to humanity, they ain't doing nothing wrong because you're doing it to some extent in a different way, not directly the same way, but that dollar is basically you. It's the same thing. The You see... There's going to be different types of people, just like there's different kinds of money. 
There's the dollar bill, the $5 bill, $10 bill. Some people are representative of the $1 bill. Some people are representative of the $100, $100 bill, which you would have the people who are more in, 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 in the illusion of this power that we go by. So they're more financially stable. Um, you know, they're more in, uh, in alignment with the system as far as what they do participating in certain things that would get this machine to keep moving. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes what happens if you have money that isn't really producing for you? You know what I'm saying? What do you do? The government will give you money, all right, to basically support you to some extent. But why? Because it's an investment and they're getting a return on that investment. At the end of the day, when they invest in you, you are going to return that money to a system to support yourself here by eating, paying bills and whatnot. It's all going. See, all systems or companies that we have here are all owned by only a handful of companies, all of them. So you may have hundreds and hundreds of different companies. They're all owned by only a specific few. I think five or seven of them. You know what I'm saying? So in actuality, it doesn't matter if you're getting support from the government or whatnot. They're supporting you in order for you to recirculate that into the system to keep the machine moving. So in other words, it's like a blind consent. Okay. So when you think that people are taking advantage of you, it's just basically because you're using the system a certain way. So the system is using you a certain way because you don't know your own power. Okay. Now, is that to say that you can't participate in this system? No, but you participate in it consciously and have the system now work for you. Because at the end of the day, now you're changing it from a physical to a spiritual way. More or less, you're coming in from your own spiritual metaphysical space to now manage the physical areas of your life, but starting from your metaphysical realm. You know what I'm saying? So the blueprint now is designed by you directly and not by consent of somebody else designing it for you. And then you go and just follow along in the system that has been designed by you, okay, but hijacked and manipulated in a way that is not serving you. You get what I'm saying? So I hope I'm making myself clear on this video when it comes to that. But, you know, you are the money. The same way you attract money into your life. Okay. If you don't have consciousness, you'll be used by the people who are attracting you by basically you think it's people in a sheep herd like mentality, but it's not. It's just the amount of money that gets attracted to that source. That is utilizing you the same way you use money and attract money into your life. Okay? It's all by consent. The system is designed a certain way for you to use. See, it's very well organized. So you have no choice but to use it. Right? But when you use it, don't forget you're consenting to a system being designed a certain way. And if you don't know what you are, then you'll be used in that same way also. Same thing goes with how you eat animals. Same way goes with how you treat people. Okay? Because at the end of the day, when you look at everything outside of you, everything outside of you is basically still a version or an extension of you. Okay? Now, when you're in a high vibration, okay, then you're able to be in harmony to build your reality a certain way. But if you're in the low frequency or vibration, then this is where you start to go into destructive mode. But are you doing destruction in a conscious way or in an unconscious way? Are you doing it just to satisfy the animal urges of you? Or are you consciously destroying to make sure that you can now go into a harmonious state or raise your frequency and vibration to now build something for yourself? It's kind of like you just, you, you, you take something down, do demolition, and then, you know, build something else in that field of energy with a stronger foundation. You get what I'm saying? The, the system is designed perfectly. It's, it's, it's designed in a way that you, you, you somehow you have to use it. You get what I'm saying? You can't just disconnect and not use it. But then again, the same way that you perceive things, it's all, it's all on you, actually. Okay? Because here's the thing, though. If you look at how you're interested in a car, right? 
and you want a car so bad, you start doing research, you go to the dealership, you do a lot of research and you want it so bad that all of a sudden now you start to see these cars everywhere. You get what I'm saying? But it's not to say these, this car was never there to begin with. It's always been there. You just never noticed it, right? But once you got your attention to it, your perception opened up to that. So it's important to have an open mind so that this way you can start perceiving things because we only see a limited perception of things, but it's because that's just the way we decide to be. If you decide to put your time and energy because you're, you're, how much are you worth per hour? You know what I'm saying? So if you're investing, let's say an hour into opening up your mind and working on your consciousness and your mentality to actually perceive a broader, a broader spectrum of this reality, then that's you taking the decision to actually broaden your perspective and change the way you see things. Things you never saw before, you may see things. That's why they say, can you see the beauty in things? But if you don't see the beauty in things, it's because you decide not to see the beauty in things. But the moment you decide to see the beauty in things, the beauty in things are automatically going to be presented to you. The same way you didn't realize a car that you've always wanted in the road all the time, but then you start to see it all the time. It's because you started paying attention to this car that now it's showing itself to you in its reality, but it's always been there. There's things that you may be presented to every day that may be either something that's going to empower you or open your eyes to a different reality to have you change your life forever, but you're just not realizing it because you just didn't make the decision to put your time and investments into that. You get what I'm saying? So energy is going to flow where attention goes, but that's your currency. This can go into the area of diseases and whatnot. You know what I'm saying? Because here's the thing. None of this stuff that we're experiencing as far as diseases and whatnot really exists. Okay? But it's there now, you know what I'm saying, because of how we're perceiving it to be and how it's presented to us and how and what we believe behind it. So we're going to go into, like, for example, the disease part. If you have certain ways of managing your energy, which is the money, because you're, you're, you're the uh, CEO of your company. But if you have a mismanagement of energy, okay, you're going to have certain diseases present themselves to you in your life so this is why because at the end of the day if you have a mismanagement of energy you're putting too much attention into something outside of you it's stressing you out to the point that you're going to be in debt so let's say for example you have a lot of anger toward something and it is something that you don't address or fix within you you could throw all the anger you want at people it ain't really going to reach them. It's only going to hurt, hurt and affect you. So you start having problems with your liver, your spleen, let's say. You start having problems with your pancreas. And that's because you threw all this energy out into an emotion, okay, towards something that really doesn't matter because it really is an illusion anyway. And it's just a version of you. So you are literally, you think you're throwing it at them, but them being a version of you is really hurting you because you're doing it to yourself. So you could be angry, you could be hateful, you could be this toward anybody in your reality. It's only going to hurt you. And what happens now? All that energy you spent out, what did you pay in return to your liver and certain areas of your body that you didn't pay back that debt to? You spend energy, right? Did you have a return on investment on that energy that you spent, right? A lot of people go to work. You know what I mean? And, and they, they get to a point where they acquire their American dream, we'll call a house, cars and all that. But by the time they really do get to enjoy it, they're already very old and they're too old to enjoy it, right? So they really didn't enjoy it. They just worked for something that they got nothing in return for. They're leaving it for somebody else. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> leaving it to a system. Because who is to say that when you die, the show really does go on? Think about that. You think that when you actually, because you see people dying and you see that you go on, right? But how do you know you yourself that when you die, the world does continue? Because if the sun was to go, right, reality would cease to exist. See, people think it would just be like we're in darkness. No, we wouldn't just be in darkness because you could be in a building, let's say, right? And it's got a generator and the, the electricity is still running there. But the sun goes out outside. Everything will just go because that's the generator of this reality. You know what I'm saying? So if the sun just happens to completely turn off, let's say, they wish to completely do away with the sun, reality here 
would cease to exist because this is what's energizing and generating all the particles here to have it be observed by you who is actually empowering this reality with your senses. You get what I'm saying? So just let's say I'm giving you the example. If you were in a building and there was generators there because all the power went out, you would still cease to exist. Nothing would exist. It doesn't matter if you're in a building with lights because if the sun goes out, everything goes out. So how do you know that when you go out, the world, the, the show really does go on? You don't know that, right? But I think that the show doesn't go on. Everything stops, right? So the same way when you stop thinking, you stop the world the same exact way. So whatever you're energizing, okay, things are going to be presented to you. The media is going to show you things. The world is so organized. Everything's so organized that you can find all this exoteric truth about the government, the Illuminati, the Masons, everything you want to see, all these symbols, you can see all that, right? But at the end of the day, that's energy that you're putting into that. It's a perception that you may share with other people, okay? What can other people do with that? That's where you want to start to ask yourself, what if I just ignore all this? What am I not? Am I really supposed to know all that? You know what I'm saying? What if I just completely do away with that information in my mind? Would it affect me? You know what I'm saying? What if I just put all my focus into how it works from the inside out? Because again, how do we know that we didn't have a certain intimate connection with our body to the point that we can go within us so easily, in fact, because it's hard for people to go into a meditative state, but then it is also proven that some people who have done this into practice, they can go into a meditative state a lot faster than somebody would kind of imagine. You can go into a medita into a meditation within like seconds, okay? So that would be that you would get into that state a lot faster, which means you would have access to your internal world and be able to access things within you while your body is asleep and you still have that consciousness. The thing is that when it takes a long time for you to get into that state, you start to lose your consciousness with your, into your, with your body, you know what I'm saying? And then you just go into that realm unconscious, okay? But if you can maintain that consciousness because you're able to go into that state because you're able to put your body at rest at a, at, a, at, a, at a quicker period, then you'd be able to accomplish things a lot differently as far as acquiring any kind of information, which is basically wisdom that you're acquiring rather than external knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Based on somebody's story. Okay. So energy mismanagement. Can create diseases for sure. So, if you don't pay, if you if you spend all your money in a club, and you don't pay your bills, <coughs> you get kicked out of your house. They'll turn the lights off on you, right? So, what do you think happens with your body when you're putting too much energy into places that don't matter, and you don't pay attention to the return on investment? What do you think happens? Diseases is equivalent to you either getting kicked out of your house or getting the lights shut off on you. And a shut off would be an organ just mis misfiring or going bad. You know what I'm saying? Having a check engine light come on. Drive your car a certain way and you see what happens too. Add the improper fuel or don't do tune-ups on your car and see what happens. The tune-up for the human vessel, okay, should be meditation for your mind, mental exercises for your, for your focus muscle and, and your ability to be able to focus, and of course, physical exercise to strengthen your foundation and then of course detoxification when need to you know what i'm saying just to keep keep the the, the flow of energy clear which should put, should be done mostly with the mind anyway and your breathing there's always an exchange when you're breathing as well you know what i'm saying there's a return on investment on how you're breathing as well you know what i'm saying you the, when you take in a breath you know what i'm saying and then you 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 it, it's that reciprocity but there's always an exchange there also. What happens when um, 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 uh, uh, you're eating bad? I mean, there's, there's going to be a chemical reaction. But if you have all the microbes and all the bacteria in check, that's your, that's your major line of defense. That, those, are, those are your major protections, is the bacteria. They should be able to process any kind of bacteria that we would consider ideas like E. coli or certain viruses and whatnot. But if your, vi if your bacteria is off, because all health starts in the gut, but if your bacteria is off, then <laughs> the invaders could take over a lot easier. 
it, you're outnumbered. Hmm? We'll talk soon.